Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Petal lecture series on the calculus of variations. This is the fifth lecture of the series. In the last lecture, we discussed the concept of surface integral, where surface B is uh, in three dimension space x, y, z, and a function is defined on the surface that is f x, y, z for each point uh, P, x, uh, which is whose coordinates are x, y, z. This point is on the surface and the values of this function are defined on all points on the surface and it on its boundary. B is the surface and delta B is its boundary. Uh, this function is assumed to be continuous on the surface and uh, on its boundary also. So, then the surface integral double integral over B f x, y, z d s, this is capital S and not the arc length is small s. Here d s is the element area on the surface, the typical surface element is like this shaded darkened curved square or curved uh, rectangle. This surface is partitioned into these element areas. Uh, d s delta s 1, delta s 2 and so on up to delta s n and x i, y i, z i is a point in this delta s i. Then the integral is defined as the limit of this sum, summation uh, i equal to 1 to capital N, when n is the number of uh, these element surface areas, the number of uh, elements partitioning the whole surface and then we take this summation f of x i, y i, z i, where x i, y i, z i is the point in that uh, uh, element area delta s i times uh, the area of uh, that element that is uh, delta s i. And if this limit exists, we uh, define it as the integral double integral over b f x y z d s. Here this integral will be defined it will not be depending on the way we partition it. For any partition, uh, when we uh, pass to the limit, it should give you the same value. So, under the sufficient conditions like uh, f is continuous and surf uh, this surface is piecewise smooth and its boundary is uh, piecewise continuously uh, differentiable, then this limit does not depend in the manner we partition it and so the integral will be defined. Here, how we calculate this surface area, we as we know we have some experience of calculating on the flat uh, planes, the functions which are defined in certain domain like this. So, here x in the x y plane, we have this flat surface area d and a function z is defined on this and we have seen that. Uh, the surface area uh, is given by this formula. This also is a particular case of the more general one which we are going to consider. So, here we have for any uh, point P on this surface like this, here the surface is parameterized by two parameters u and v. So, a position vector of a point P uh, that is the director uh, vector O p starting from O and ending at p. So, he, here uh, it will have three components x, y, z. So, each component is a function of u v those parameters and so we get x u v, y u v, z u v like that these are the components. So, the vector r will be given by x u v uh, i plus y u comma v j plus z u comma v k and these u v are 
within the range of these bounded intervals alpha, beta and gamma, delta. So, here uh, then this element area d s, we have seen that this comes out to be the cross uh, absolute value of the cross product r u cross r v uh, d u d v, because r u d, d u is the tangent on the curve v equal to constant and r v d v is the tangent element uh, on the curve u equal to constant. So, this curved surface element like this darkened one will be actually given by uh, which is d s equal to uh, absolute value of the cross product r u cross r v and since d u d v is positive it comes out. So, that is the element area d s and so here r u is the partial derivative with respect to the parameter u and r v is the partial derivative of r position vector uh, with respect to v. So, each component gets differentiated partially with respect to those variables and we get this and so r u cross r v square here we use the formula which we proved that for any two vectors a and b in r 3 we see that a cross b is given by um, absolute value of a cross b square is given by uh, absolute value of a square times absolute value of b square minus uh, a dot b this is the dot product of two vectors that is a 1 b 1 a 2 b 2 a 3 b 3 where a i s and b i s are the components of a and b respectively the square of that. So, we get uh, this r u cross r v absolute value square. Uh, like this and so this r u dot r u is e that is how we define that r u dot r u is e and r v dot r v this is f and r u dot r v uh, this is g. So, uh, this absolute value uh, of r u cross r v square comes out to be e f minus g square. So, therefore, uh, uh, absolute value of r u cross r v is square root of uh, e f minus g square. We take here positive square root and that is what we have here. And so, our formula here uh, this integral comes out to be in terms of now these are x y u x y z are functions of u v here and uh, this we have calculated that d s equal to square root e f minus g square d u d v. So, that is uh, nothing but this integration over uh, the flat surface d u d v which we already know how to calculate. So, that is the surface integral formula in terms of uh, parametric representation u v and then also we have normal derivative general normal derivative in three dimension as we have defined the normal derivative of any function here. Uh, so, we have some surface here like this and some function uh, phi is defined on this. So, phi x y z which is defined at each point on this surface. So, normal derivative of this phi is so normal derivative of phi which was defined like uh, we defined it in two dimension we define it limit of delta n tending to 0 of uh, phi x y z minus phi x prime y prime z prime. Here uh, this is a part of the surface the closed surface like this where here this is x dash y dash z dash inside the domain and the point x y z is on the surface. So, here it is assumed that phi is defined at those interior points x dash y dash z dash. So, th this limit over delta n and we as before we have seen it in two dimension it turns out to be gradient of phi dot n cap.
where n cap is in unit normal, this n cap, n cap is the unit normal, which is n 1 i plus n 2 j plus n 3 k, i j k are unit vectors in x y z directions respectively. And we see that this unit vector therefore, n 1 square plus n 2 square plus n 3 square this should be equal to 1. These are uh, direction cosines they are also given like this if this normal makes this angle alpha, beta and gamma. So, here it is like I will blow it up in this way. This with x axis x, y and z. So, with this z the angle is gamma with this x axis alpha and this beta. So, n 1 is actually cos alpha, n 2 is cos beta, n 3 is cos gamma, where this n cap is the unit vector here, this is the normal to the surface and it makes angles alpha, beta, gamma with the coordinate axis and so these are the direction cosines uh, given by cos alpha, cos beta, cos gamma. So, we can see that this can be calculated and so uh, this is also the another notation of this is uh, del phi over del n. So, we can see that del phi over del n is del phi over del x, gradient vector is del phi over del x and then uh, first component is n 1. So, that is cos alpha plus del phi over del y cos beta plus del phi over del z cos gamma. So, this is another convenient formula for this if in terms of uh, uh, direction ratios, uh, we have uh, certain numbers here uh, small a, small b, small c, then we divide by uh, its uh, square root uh, summation a, a square plus b square plus c square. So, that is also can be seen here, if uh, let us say the surface, if the surface is given by uh, z equal to some function of z x y, then we know that the normal. So, in that or in terms of u x y z let us say if we give it u x y z equal to some constant c if we can solve it for z explicitly, we can express this z as a function of x y also. So, then we know that the normal will be uh, gradient of u over. So, this in this case then n cap comes out to be gradient of u over absolute value of the gradient of u and then we get the directional derivative. So, del phi over del n is we have gradient of phi dot n cap. So, that will be gradient of phi dot gradient of u over gradient of u. So, this in component form, this is del phi by del x, del u by del x plus del phi by del y, del u by del y plus del phi by del z del u by del z over square with plus minus sign square root here del u by del x square plus del u by del y square plus del u by del z square. So, plus sign or minus sign we have to see that which side we are going to take. So, that cosine of the angle should be positive there and so that we have to choose 
either plus sign or minus sign accordingly. If uh, we choose plus sign if del u by de, del phi by del n is positive, then we choose plus sign and if this is negative, then we choose minus sign. Now, here the Laplacian will be defined Lap, La, Laplace operator or Laplacian is actually defined as uh, de Laplacian of for twice continuously differentiable function v can define we define this laplacian that of u continuous function u we define laplacian of u as del 2u by del x2 plus del 2u by del y2 plus del 2u by del z2 which is nothing but uh, gradient of del dot del like this of u or in short it is written like del, del square u that is another notation for the Laplacian. Now, we go to Green's theorem in higher dimension uh, firstly we have seen that Green's theorem in higher dimension now we will see. So, recall in two dimension we had seen that this if you have this case like in x y you have some certain domain like this and here this boundary of this is let us say c and its positive direction is taken like this anti clockwise and uh, here we have seen that if m and n are uh, smooth functions here we see that this m dx plus n dy this was equal to over d nx minus m y dx dy this we had established in the earlier lectures that where m n are uh, continuously differentiable in d and they are continuous on uh, piece wise continuous on the boundary and c is piece wise smooth uh, then uh, we have this result which is Green's theorem in two dimension. Now, we can generalize this in higher dimension. So, first let us see certain applications in two dimension itself. So, we have we can write this in a slightly different form like this. So, if we take m equal to like this, so we can write this as n equal to p, let us say n equal to p and m equal to minus q. Then we get p d y minus q d x and this line integral will be then equal to over d we get p x plus q y d x d y. So, just in uh, removing this minus sign from here and then that minus sign will come here. Now, we can, uh, so this is a slight, I mean just same form with different choices of m and n. Uh, so, uh, now we take p equal to some eta g and q equal to eta f. Here these uh, eta g and f, they are uh, continuously differentiable functions and uh, in on d and 
continuous piece wise continuous on the boundary of D that is on C and uh, C is of course, assumed to be uh, piece wise smooth. That means, at each point the tangent is well defined tangent and normal are defined except at finitely many points. So, there uh, so putting this P and Q here you get the following uh, which is on this side we get eta. So, put this p equal to eta g. So, we get eta g d y minus f d x equal to here. Uh, so, we will have two terms here this double integral because there are two functions here. So, uh, x derivative will give you eta g x plus eta x g. So, like that we have and collecting uh, these things here we get this eta g x plus f y d x d y. Here this these are all partial derivative subscripted means the partial derivative plus double integral over d eta So, g eta x plus f eta y d x d y. And so, we take uh, one term on the other side. So, we will get like this here. Okay. So, we have, so we can write this over d like this g eta x plus f eta y d x d y. We take this on the other side, so we get minus d eta g x plus f y d x d y plus this boundary integral eta g d y minus f so, this is the general form of integration by parts. So, Green's theorem gives us the general way of the same formula which we had in one dimension recall that integration by parts formula was a to b uh, u v prime d x is minus u prime v d x plus a to b and u v evaluated at a to b. So, this is one dimensional, so this is one dimensional integration by parts and so this is two dimensional integration by parts. So, this is a generalization of uh, the earlier integration by parts formula which we discussed. Here we can see that uh, here the x derivatives uh, they are on eta, y derivatives they are on uh, eta and g and f are uh, not having any derivatives here. So, if we shift these derivatives on g, we get a minus sign here like we got here. So, uh, we got minus sign and eta becomes free of derivatives and this x derivative gets shifted on to g. Similarly, y derivative gets shifted on to f like this and this eta becomes free of any derivative. We gain minus sign here. So, this is the generalization of uh, integration by parts formula uh, of one dimension. So, this is two dimensional integration by parts formula. Similarly, we can have uh, higher dimensional integration by parts formula. So, we can repeat this process like this. If we take, so take now eta equal to psi and g equal to phi x and f equal to phi y. So, here in this we will take eta equal to uh, psi and g equal to phi x and f equal to phi y. So, we get this thing here 
and here this x derivative will give you g x x like that. So, we get finally psi del square phi d x d y equal to minus this is phi x psi x plus phi y psi y d x d y plus t bound integral psi del phi by del n d s. Here this s is the arc length. So, here we see that here if we put eta equal to uh, eta equal to psi here and g equal to phi x and f equal to phi y we get from this. Uh, here we get g x will give you phi x x and this will give you phi y y. So, that is the Laplacian a two dimensional Laplacian here. So, eta equal to psi eta equal to psi and you get Laplacian there and then in this term uh, here we get uh, g equal to phi x. So, this is eta x uh, means psi x and f is phi y and eta is uh, eta y is psi y. So, we get this uh, term here with minus sign. This can also be written slightly differently like this. and uh, this is the dot product of the gradient of phi dot gradient of psi. And here this is uh, obviously, this is uh, we know that this is gradient of phi dot n cap d s. So, this is the in a vector form we have this and if we interchange uh, phi and psi we get phi here and del square psi d x d y this remains the same because it is a symmetric. So, we get uh, gradient of psi dot gradient of phi d x d y plus rho over c. So, psi uh, here sorry this will be phi now and this will be psi dot n cap d x. So, subtracting this we get the following Green's identity that phi uh, this we can subtract from this. So, phi uh, del square psi minus psi del square phi d x d y these two terms cancel each other and so we get this boundary integral phi we either write like this or we can write del uh, phi over del n in form also. So, this is uh, phi del psi by del n minus psi del phi by del n. So, this is Green's one of the Green's identities uh, expressed like this and if we write phi equal to psi here we can see that then we will have here uh, del square uh, this dot product will give you square of this this thing. So, if we write phi equal to psi in this if we write phi equal to psi. So, we will have in this phi del square phi d x d y will be minus d mod del phi square plus phi del phi by del n d s. So, there are various forms of uh, identities obtained like this which can be uh, by proper choice of m and n or in uh, f and g. Uh, we can see various forms of Green's identities. We can go to higher order uh, integration by parts also. If we take, so if we take, this 
this q equal to 0 and p equal to g phi x minus sorry g eta x eta x minus eta g x. Then we get, so we substitute here p equal to p equal to uh, g eta x minus eta g x and q equal to 0 here. So, we will get the following thing integration over d we get g uh, del 2 eta by del x 2 now d x d y and this is over d eta del 2 g over del x 2 d x d y plus the boundary integral c over c g eta x minus eta g x d y. Because we have chosen q equal to 0 here, q equal to 0. So, we get only c we have taken q equal to 0 here. So, this term will not be there. Uh, this we will have only p d y and p is chosen like this g eta x minus eta g x. So, we get the same thing here and uh, we get. So, this is what is now uh, higher order I mean uh, higher order derivative integration by parts here, uh, because now two derivatives are being shifted on g. Here uh, de, uh, there is eta x x we can write it like this also in short form g eta x x d x d y. This is over d eta g x x d x d y and plus g eta x minus eta g x d y. So, here this x x first we shift one derivative we gain one minus sign and then again we shift x derivative we get uh, those x x derivatives on g and eta, eta becomes free. So, this is shifting of derivatives uh, here because of two derivatives are being shifted we get plus sign here and on the boundary we get this term. So, that is the integration by parts formula for second order derivatives. Similarly, we can uh, take now uh, p equal to something and q equal to 0. So, then we will have p equal to g eta y minus eta g y by 2 and q equal to g eta x minus eta g x by 2. So, then we get for mixed integrals uh, mixed derivatives that is eta x y d x d y. So, this is now these this these derivatives are shifted on to this. So, eta becomes free and g x y d x d y over d and you get those bounded terms 1 by 2 c g eta y minus eta g y d y plus 1 by sorry minus the minus sign here minus 1 by 2 g eta x minus eta g x. So, this is for the mixed derivative. Now, we go to three dimension uh, case and we will have the following result. So, here we use the uh, divergence theorem which is what it says uh, here this for given any uh, bounded volume v here and 
f. So, here divergence means del dot here del dot f d x d y d z is actually equal to the surface integral or the surface of this v f dot n cap d s. Here we have the following picture. So, certain bounded volume v is enclosed by the surface s. So, the surface is s. So, at any point the outward normal is given by n cap as usual and uh, the points are there in the domain in v. So, the this is what is the divergence theorem in component form we get this. So, f as components f 1, f 2, f 3, f 1 i plus f 2 j plus f 3 k. So, then we get here f 1 del f 1 over del x plus del f 2 over del y plus del f 3 over del z. That is the divergence of f, uh, because uh, del operator is uh, del x i plus del y j plus del z k. So, dot product gives you this d x d y d z. Here f uh, these components f i s are assumed to be uh, continuously differentiable in v and continuous on the surface uh, s and uh, s is piecewise smooth that is the, on those patches uh, where s, s is smooth and is well defined that is continuous function at, uh, at every point except uh, on certain uh, boundary of those patches like it could be uh, like this. So, in these patches uh, let us say s 1, s 2, s 3 and s 4, uh, this n is uh, continuously defined on uh, those patches as soon as. So, here this side, the surface integral side you get f 1 n 1 plus f 2 n 2 plus sorry these are scalars components n 2 plus f 3 n 3 d s. Here n cap as usual have components n 1 i plus n 2 j plus n 3 k. This is unit normal. So, those are defined those cosines direction cosines of the normal here. So, how do we see this uh, theorem? Here we will uh, component wise we show that uh, this uh, integral of this del f 1 over del x is f 1 n 1 d s and so on. So, we show let us do it for the one the last term. So, last term we will show that this uh, over v uh, del f 3 over del z d x d y d z equal to this over s this is f 3 n 3 d s. So, like that we have so or in uh, we so what we have to show that uh, like this that f i this i equal to 1, 2, 3. So, we show it for i equal to 3 So, what we will have uh, this we again we will do it for a simple case like this that here uh, we will take uh, this surface as parameterized by the x y here coordinates and so this uh, surface s is projected on to this r here this is the projection of this 
and let us say surface is like this. We take the simple case that surface has two parts, the upper part, the lower part we write it as uh, z equal to g x y and the upper part uh, z equal to h x y. So, assuming that the surface can be represented like this and this r is the projection of this surface, here this is the projection of this and so r is the projection of projections of, uh, of both the parts, let us say this is S 1 and this is part is S 2. So, S is S 1 union S 2. So, then we can see that this triple integral over V del F 3 over del Z d x d y d z here will be like this over r and then here z component will be g x y to h x y of del f 3 over del z d z and d x d y and so it will be over r here f 3. So, z differentiation and integration will cancel each other. So, we will get the boundary terms x y and h x y minus f evaluated at x y g x y. d x d y. So, here we can see that uh, this is uh, what we will see that this is actually equal to the right hand side of that. So, here uh, we see that if we write this parametric representation like this x y. So, then the for the upper surface we see that uh, r comes out for any point p here position vector r will be given by uh, x i plus y j plus z component is there x on s 2 h x y k and so uh, this element area here will be so d s here will be r x cross r y absolute value d x d y and we can see that this is nothing but so r x so, absolute value of the determinant like i, j, k and here you have 1, r x is 1 and this is 0 and this is h x here and uh, 0, 1, h, y here, absolute value of that. So, we get here minus h x i so, let us uh, absolute value of that minus h x i minus g h y j and plus k. So, we, here this square root of 1 plus h x square plus h y square that is what we will get here. And so, here we see that this is the uh, here no, normal this cos gamma will be positive and on the lower part we will see that here we get. So, this side is nothing but the s of f 3 dot n 3 d s. We have seen that here let us first see that what is this actually element area. See here, so n 3 d s, this is the vector form of this uh, element area will be actually equal to n 3 is k uh, d s will come out to be simply uh, d x d y. So, you will have uh, this n 3 d s will be like this. 
because the component n3 component is just one here. So, n th so n3 component is the k here. So, we get this. Now, on the lower part, we get n3 ds on s1, we get this as minus because here you will have in the negative direction. So, we will get minus k dx dy. So, we can see that here this you get minus sign on this. So, we get finally, the same thing here f x y. So, this dot product n 3 will be uh, 1 here, n 3 will be n 3 is a k component. So, it is absolute value will be plus 1 here and here you because of this you get minus. So, this minus sign will be adjusted and so let us say this is 1. So, we get from this integral surface this f 3 n 3 d s as f x y on the lower s has the union s 1 s 2. So, on s 2 we get positive 1. So, that is h x y. So, let us first do like this. This is s 1 union s 2. So, f 3 n 3 d s. So, first on s 2 that is with positive sign f x y h x y and d x d y because dot product here will have this one and so d x d y and over this reason r minus minus over the region r again and f 3 x y g x y d x d y. So, we see that uh, it matches with the uh, quantity here for each i. Similarly, we can do for uh, other components and so we get overall by adding all the terms we get the divergent theorem. Now, so here uh, in the component form, it can be written like this as you have seen already. The, so, in component form, we have this that over triple integral v, we get f x plus f y plus f z d x d y d z we get over this s f 1 that is or we can write it in a cosine form cos alpha plus f 2 cos beta plus f 3 cos gamma d s where n 1 is cos alpha as usual, n 2 is cos beta, n 3 is cos gamma. n has components n 1 i plus n 2 j plus n 3 k. So, we have this. Now, if we choose as before, we choose uh, f 1. this was f 1, f 1 x, f 2, the components f 3 y. So, f 1, f 2, f 3. So, let me write it neatly. This is f 1 x plus f 2 y plus f 3 z. There is the divergence of f here. And so, we get this from the divergence theorem. Now, if we choose f 1 equal to let us say eta f, f 2 equal to eta g plus f 3 comma f 3 equal to eta h. 
where again uh, eta f g and h are assumed to be sufficiently smooth and so we get this over v here f eta x plus g eta y plus h eta z d x d y d z and we get one more term here we take it on the other side with the minus sign now and so we will have over v eta f x plus g x plus g y sorry plus h z d x d y d z. Now, that boundary term is now surface here. So, we get surface integral over the surface s eta and then you have f cos alpha plus g cos beta plus h cos gamma d s. So, you can see that this is now three dimensional integration by parts here derivatives on eta. So, here eta x, eta y, eta z. Now, we shift these derivatives on f, g and h we get this minus sign here and so we get f x plus g y plus h x here and eta becomes free of derivatives and here this is the boundary term here boundary is the surface. So, we get this and if we uh, put eta equal to take eta equal to psi and f equal to phi x, g equal to phi y and h equal to phi z, we get this higher order integration by parts. So, psi del square phi d x d y d z minus here this is gradient of phi dot gradient of psi. This will have three components here phi x, phi y, phi z gradient of psi d x, d y, d z and plus this bounded term over s psi del phi by del n which is now three dimensional direction uh, normal derivative d s if we interchange so phi and psi and then subtract we get the similar formula which we had earlier. So, this over v uh, phi del square psi minus psi del square phi d x d y d z will be this term will cancel and we will have only the bounded term. phi del psi by del n minus psi del phi by del n. Actually start the uh, our lectures on the calculus of variation we will introduce certain concepts uh, again and then uh, we will start the Euler's conditions and various concepts related to the calculus of variations. Thank you very much for viewing the lecture.